Dungeons and Dragons, or D&D, is a fantasy role-playing game that people have been playing all over the world for over 40 years. It's the granddaddy of all modern role-playing games, and its release in 1974 is commonly recognized as the launch of the modern role-playing industry. I've been playing Dungeons and Dragons since I was 10 years old, and I want to share with you the joy that this game has brought me. Together with five of my friends, a few of whom are going to be playing for the very first time, I'm going to show you the basics of how to play this amazing game. If you've never played D&D before, or if you love the game and want to recall the joy of playing it for the first time, this is the show for you. I'm Jason Charles Miller, and welcome to your Starter Kit. To play Dungeons & Dragons, you really only need three things. A Dungeon Master, or DM. Ideally, this is someone who knows the rules of the game pretty well, or is willing to read the rule books to learn. The Dungeon Master guides the story. You'll see how that works. For our story, that's me. An adventure. This could be a published adventure from Wizards of the Coast, who makes D&D, one of any number of amazing smaller companies who publish D&D adventures, or one that's completely made up by the DM. For Starter Kit, some friends and I have taken a classic D&D adventure from 1979 in search of the unknown and rewritten it to make it a good teaching tool for new players with an experienced DM. Players excited about the game, usually three to six, but really any number works, depending upon the adventure and everyone's experience. The players will each create and play the main characters of our adventure. So you've got me, your dungeon master, and you've got an adventure. Let's meet our players and together, will create our characters. Hey. Hey. Carmel. Nice to see you. Come on Thanks. in. <laughs> Have a seat. Hey. Hey. So uh, thanks for coming over today. My pleasure. Uh, we're going to play Dungeons and Dragons today. This is exciting. That you've never played before in your life, right? Never. <laughs> <laughs> what I wanted to do was make sort of a classic party that's been represented in D&D the entire time the game's been around and, and really four classes. Class is your profession or your job, your main job. We're gonna have two fighters. Those are the guys that are in the front lines swinging the swords. We're gonna have a wizard and we're gonna have a cleric. Cleric is the one, just remember the back of your mind, I always wanna keep that cleric alive because she can keep the rest of us alive. Okay. Um, I gave you a little bit, a little bit of homework to kind of look up some things. Yes, I did. Um, it, it's, it's quite involved. Yeah. It's, it's exciting. We kind of uh, came to the conclusion uh, that you might want to play a rogue. Yep. So uh, the rogue is sort of uh, the, the, the sneaky trickster of the bunch. And a lot of times in Dungeons and Dragons, you're going to encounter, uh, there's going to be traps, there's going to be locked doors, there's going to be puzzles, there's going to be hidden things that a rogue has special abilities to handle more so than anyone else. You're a good fighter, but primarily um, you you will be uh, probably the second the second line of, of defense. We've got the fighters up front, um, but you could try to sneak behind a, an opponent uh, unseen and stab them in the back. That's what rogues I, do. I, I, yeah. <laughs> um, your um, you're gonna play a halfling, uh, and it's funny because you're our tallest player today, and yet you're playing a character that's three feet tall. I know, I'm so, always like, I'm small, I'm small, yeah, remember that. Just, 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 okay. just. So we're gonna talk about alignment for a second. You're okay. chaotic good, and that's a role-playing, uh, that's sort of a role-playing guide. Meaning chaotic good is you're good, but you know, the ends justify the means. Like whatever like I you, could turn. Yeah, whatever, whatever you have to do to kind of get the job done, you're gonna get done. But but you're still mainly a force for good. Okay. Um, think sort of like Han Solo, you know? Okay. He, he, he gets the things done. He, even, you know, is it illegal? You know, maybe, but that's okay. <laughs> Let's roll some dice for your stats. Okay. And what I like to do is I would like you to roll these six times, and every time we're gonna throw out the lowest die. Okay. So the first roll isn't necessarily for the top ability. Okay. We're gonna get six scores to choose from, and then we're gonna assign those as we go. Okay, yeah. so. Love it, so the, your first roll is a 16. That's really good. Okay. This one, but I like, I really like those two. And uh, 14, 
another another good one. I'm I'm really liking these scores. I, I wanted the rogue to have good scores. Good, so we're good. already in, in a good position here. Uh, one thing to keep in mind too is you're a light foot halfling, and okay. those those are the halflings that want to go on adventures. Those are the ones okay. that you find sort of more out in the world, and so you actually will get some ability score. Uh, help. You'll get some bonuses. So okay. whatever you assign to your dexterity, you'll get a plus two, and whatever you assign to your charisma, you'll get a plus one. So that's Great. always good. I like those two. Um, I would say take the 16 okay. because it's going to turn into an 18. I see, because you can't go higher than 18. You right? can, but it, it, so even if it turns into a 19, you're going to get the same modifier. Oh, I get it. So okay, might as well. So let's do 16. Yeah, so make that an 18. Here. Oh, 18. Yeah. Right, I'm adding mm -hmm. two. And then and add plus four. To that because that will apply to your die rolls later. So we got to figure out where to put that 17. Um, wisdom is a great place for a rogue uh, uh, because you're going to be using that skill a lot when you're trying to detect certain things and that's sort of what the rogue does. You might sneak out in front of people. Uh, charisma could be good too. Are you the kind of rogue that's going to bluff people, try to persuade them to do what you want them to do? High charisma helps with that. Um, if you're maybe a frontline fighter, do you want to be a, a crazy rogue fighter? Strength will help a lot with that too. So uh, I guess it just really depends on where you see your character. Okay, I, I think I'm going to go with charisma. Okay, I like that. And you have a bonus there too, so that 17 will turn into an 18. You've got two 18s. That's, I'm pretty badass. Yes, that is, that is a badass character. I mean, uh, yeah, I mean, usually like if someone were to show up at a game with a character that had two 18s, the DM might be a little <laughs> suspicious. I saw you okay. roll that myself, so, you know, I, so. I, that's good, wow. This okay, is really I'm good. Um, and I think I'd like to put the 14 on the wisdom. Yes, that's a really good. Good idea. The 13 and the 12 are basically the same because right. they'll both give you a plus one and the 11 uh, won't give you any bonuses. So yeah, tell me what you think. Okay, I'm thinking I'd like to put constitution in case I get in a scrape. Sure, yeah, right. that'll, give you, that'll give you a couple extra hit points or at least one. I feel like maybe that there Strength twelve mm -hmm. and intelligence eleven because I already have pretty high wisdom. Yeah, I think that's I think that's great. It's gonna really a well balanced rogue. Let's talk a little bit about some of your uh, bonuses that you get as a halfling and as a rogue. Okay. Um, one, one of the one of the great things I love about uh, halflings is you have this ability that's just called to be lucky. And what that means is, um, anytime you roll a one on a d20, which is not good, that means critical fail. Okay. Your lucky ability lets you re-roll it. You automatically get to re-roll it. Wow. Okay. If you roll a one again, it's gonna fail. Right, No right. matter what, but that, that's a really, really good ability. Okay. Um, you also have advantage versus being frightened. You're very brave. You can move through creatures of at least one size large. And what that means is you're not like physically like moving through someone like a ghost, but if, if you're in combat and your small, your, your official size is small, because there, there's small, medium, large, giant, right? Okay. So humans and elves and half elves are all size medium. So if, if you needed to move through them to get to another uh, area on the map, you could do that with no penalty. I see. Yeah. Also, you can hide behind creatures and gain cover in combat, so that's very useful. This is a great character. It really is, and these ability scores, you're gonna have fun with this character. <laughs> yeah. You really are. Uh, the last thing we need to do is decide your name. Okay. I have a name. What is your name? It's Trin Hilltopple. I love it, <laughs> I love it, Trin Hilltopple. So go ahead and write that into your uh, with a Y. Okay, yeah, gotta have the Y. Trin kind of for rogue and he'll topple for half. Halfling, yeah, mm -hmm. and here's your, here's ah, your figure. That's awesome. <laughs> Great, and I'm gonna see you when the party assembles. Awesome, see you then. Angela, Jason. hey! I am so excited to Come on you. in, come on over. Let's roll some dice. Yeah, all right, you're ready to roll. Okay, you're one of my ringers. You've played D and D before. I have. That is yeah. true. I'm, I, but I will be happy to learn more things. Today. Okay. Well, you know, maybe you're going to teach me some things too, and that's always good. Yeah. It's all, you know the DM always has to be open to learn from his players. Yeah. What I wanted to do today with today's game yeah. was uh, make a really balanced, classic 
party. And you graciously uh, <laughs> wanted to be the cleric, so I'm really thankful for that. What if they get hurt? I'm here for Yeah, uh, we decided that your cleric is going to be a cleric of the god Helm. Helm is the vigilant one, the great guard, and the watcher, god of guardians, protection, and protectors, and worshiped by guards and paladins. Uh, he was long seen as a cold and focused deity who impartially took the role of defender and sometimes also enforcer. So I think that's pretty it, cool for a cleric. It's to, very, very good. Yeah, yeah. It's pun punch and heal. Yeah, exactly, punch and heal. Yeah. yeah. Slam and heal, yeah. we're, we're, we're good to go. <laughs> You're really gonna be the, the, the lifeblood of the party and, and hopefully give them back some of their blood here and there. All right, are we ready? We're ready, okay. yeah. Nice, oh, wow. nice. That's very good. What's great about being a human mm -hmm. is you can add one to all of those. Oh, nice. Fifth edition, uh, humans get plus one to all of their ability scores. Okay. Um, so now let's figure out where we're gonna Still go. Still two eights, but that's yeah. okay. Well, you know, it, use that for your role playing, uh, <laughs> <laughs> your role playing ability. Uh, so I assume when I want to go wisdom high, right? Because I'm Yes, gonna... wisdom high for sure. So I would definitely put the 16 in the wisdom. Um, what else am I gonna need? You need tips from the DM here? I would say uh, we want to make sure you stay alive. Mm -hmm. so, so probably constitution yeah. I would go for. I need to be yeah. alive so that everyone else is alive. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Um, I like having dexterity, but intelligence might be more for spell casting. You. With clerical spells, it really relies on the wisdom more than intelligence, okay. so. Um, well, let's do dex so I yeah. can get out of the way if exactly. somebody's hitting me. Great. Perfect. Although, you know, I, what, I, what I could have said too is that because of the, the modifier, mm -hmm. an eight or a nine basically are the difference. same. Yeah, they're both negative. I one, feel it so. though. When I say like my charisma is an eight, it feels different than saying my charisma is a nine. Okay, it's yeah, that's fine. Yeah, different. different for you, so. <laughs> <laughs> and, and actually that kind of maybe goes along with you've got a lot of wisdom, but not a lot of not a lot of maybe and street book smarts. smart, not so much street yeah, smart. Yeah, so <laughs> you, can, you can play it that way. We're gonna talk about spells for a minute. As a cleric, you get your spells directly from your deity. Uh, wizards study spells that they learn in books. Clerics get them from the divine. Um, there are two types of spells that you're gonna be able to cast uh, as a first level cleric. One are cantrips. Cantrips you can cast at any time. Um, they're not very powerful, but they're sort of ingrained in your body. You know how to you know, you, you just, you've done them so many times, yeah. you can do them whenever you want. Light, 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 right. light. Yeah, there you go, just yeah. throw light everywhere. And as level one, you have, you have two level one spells. You can choose from any of these, uh, but you can only cast two of them per long rest. And a long rest is like sleeping for eight hours, hopefully. What we have to do now is, I hope you've been thinking oh, about a name for your character. My character's name is Deborah. You can call her Deb or Debbie. Okay, great. Yeah, and she's here to sort of be the mom and take care of everybody. I love it. Yeah. I love it. Mm -hmm. Deborah. Mm -hmm. All I, the thing I remember from learning how to play D&D &D in high school is that if you add just ap apostrophes in the middle of stuff, it becomes a fantasy name. This, right. yeah, exactly. So I'll just, I'll just do that. Perfect. <laughs> and here's Deborah, here's your, here's your oh figure. Oh my God, she's so beautiful. Cust custom uh, painted. That's gorgeous. So you'll be using her today to represent your character in combat. So uh, I'm gonna see you in a little bit when the party assembles. All right, let's do it. Great. Hey, hey. Mike, oh, come on over. Oh, thanks. Come on in. Thanks, man. Yeah. Thanks for coming. Of course. Great. So uh, we're gonna play D and D today. All right. Let's and, play some uh, D and D. So you've only played one other time, right? Yeah. So you're you're I've, one of my newbies. You're one I played of... on a, a a web show. Okay. At, uh, Meltdown Comics. So mm -hmm. I've never actually played without cameras and. Uh, and now and you never will. So uh, the fun, one of the fun things about playing D and D is creating your character. Okay. Um, you chose to be a fighter. So yeah. You're gonna you're gonna be a, a dwarf fighter. Okay. Now, often when you're a new player, uh, the DM will give you a pre-generated character. And, and we've done some of that today, but I wanted to do the funnest part, for me anyway, which is rolling for your stats. Okay. Um, and uh, 
I am gonna give you your very own dice. Hey. These are for you to keep. Thank you, really. Yeah, nice. Thank and you. Uh, and here's some extra dice because you can never have too many d6s because you're gonna you're gonna need a lot of these in the game okay. eventually. Or is maybe it not. Just call these dice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no. I didn't realize these were dice. There's so many. There's so many different ones. So we we've got some things set out here, but what we're gonna do first is we're gonna roll for your six attribute scores. Strength, dexterity, constitution. Those are the three physical. Uh, and then intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. And those are the more the mental or spiritual. As a first level character, because yeah. we're all starting as first level. I'm in first grade. Yeah, you're in first grade, okay. basically, as an adventurer. Yeah. You know, you might have done something else. In fact, I think we have that you, your, your uh, previous background with your character was that you brewed beer. Okay. Okay. So you were a Perfect brewer before. Activity. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> and now you're ready to kick ass. Okay. All right. Where do I throw these? Is there Anywhere. A place to the north, to the yeah, there? to the east. Right. No, just right there on the table. It's fine. Okay. Wow. Okay. So that was a pretty good roll. Okay. So now we're going to do this uh, five more times. Oh. So now you've got these six stats to place. The one thing to remember is because you're a mountain dwarf. Yeah. You get bonuses on top of this. So, uh, constitution, you're gonna get a plus two bonus to whatever whatever you place this, and okay. same with strength. What's the difference between constitution and strength? Constitution is how much uh, damage you can take, how much, like, what your, what your fortitude is, whether okay. that's, like, not only is it physical, but also how much can you get through before you get exhausted. Like kind of passive strength or something like that? It, it also has to do with what we're gonna talk about later too, which is hit points, how many hit points you get. Okay. Um, so really how much damage you can take, but also, you know, how long can you hold your breath? How long can, how, how long can you, uh, you know, march before you fall over? Okay. All that kind of stuff, that's gotcha. constitution. Okay. Also a, a great uh, stat for a fighter, for sure. Right, okay. So, so I'll put my 16 in constitution. Yeah, great, and then because of your bonuses, that'll make it an 18, right. I think that's a really good idea. Yeah, your ability scores also um, determine, uh, you're gonna be rolling different skills based on that, and you're gonna get bonuses, and with an 18, you get a plus four. So you're gonna write plus four in that little, in the little one. The 15, you're gonna get plus two. All right. And for the 13, you're gonna get plus one. Uh, now we've got- uh, I feel like I'm applying for cross a very those out. Job. Yeah, you are. Yeah. Uh, you're Applying to save the world. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> with, with the wisdom, you get a plus one, so that's good. Okay. And with the charisma, you're going to get minus one. So, I'm and you can look at that in, yeah, you can look at that in many ways. You know, charisma is really like leadership ability. It's not necessarily about physical appearance. Right. So, you're going to. Mostly beard, right? Yeah, like, yeah, you're mostly beard, first of all, which is, I can relate guessing. to. Yeah, yeah, yeah maybe, you, maybe you stink, or maybe, you know, you stink of, uh, of hops because you're always brewing beer or something. Yeah. Uh, and, or maybe you're just crude or you, you know, speak out of turn, stuff like that. What we're also going to talk about are your, your special abilities. Okay. So you've, this is what's really great about being a dwarf. You've got dark vision for up to 60 see. feet. Yeah, you can nice. see in the dark, dark for up to 60 feet. I live under a mountain. Yeah, right? that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. So you don't need any light source, anything like that. Nice. Um, you've, got an, you've got advantage on saves versus poison. We're gonna talk about advantages later. And uh, one of the great things that, about fighters is you have an ability score called second wind. So what oh, yeah. second wind is, is if, if you get damaged, if you get, if you get injured, and call in your second wind and then uh, roll a d10, add one to it and get those hit points back. So that's like, a like WWE, when it looks like I'm haggard, and ruined, yes. like, and shake then, it off, uh, and then suddenly... That's I'm it, back. that's okay. second wind. Perfect. Cool. You can do that every short rest, and a short rest is only an hour. So okay. as long as you rest for at least an hour, you can use your second wind power again. So it's very, very helpful for fighters. That's exactly what I assumed it would be. Oh, good, yeah. okay. Yeah. You, you've got a lot of standard stuff in your pack. Yeah. Check that out. Okay. And the last thing we need to do is decide your name. Oh, yeah. Have you decided your character's name? I think so. Okay, what's it gonna be? Thinking uh, Thumper. Thumper. Uh, yeah. yeah. Thumper Fireforge. Thumper Fireforge. Thumper I love it. Thumper is a T H apostrophe U M P apostrophe A R R. Okay, so Thumper. Thumper. Yeah, Thumper. Great. Okay, so write that in there. All right. Perfect. And here's Thumper. Hey. Boom. Nice. There's your guy. Little big Thumper. So we'll be using him in combat today, and that will represent your your character. All right. Cool. I'll see you soon when the party assembles. Mixie, hey, come on in. How are you? Good, how are you? Amazing. Cool. I'm excited. So we're gonna play D&D &D today. Yeah. 
and you've never played before, right? No. You're one of my brand new noobs. Noob. <laughs> okay, cool. Yeah. Um, what I wanted to do was uh, sort of play a game where we have a, a nice balanced classic party. We talked about you being a high, high elf, elf wizard. wizard. Yeah, cool. Are you excited about that? I am. Very. Awesome. One of the most fun things about uh, creating a character is rolling for your stats, rolling for your attributes. Um, the six attributes are strength, dexterity, constitution, and those three deal with more of the physical aspects. Um, Which I don't do much of as a wizard. Right, yeah, intelligence, intelligence is gonna be your... your, your uh, and wisdom. Yeah, intelligence, wisdom, Which and Which is totally not actually me. Right. <laughs> well, you know, that's <laughs> why we play charisma. pretend. <laughs> and <laughs> uh, um, What we're gonna do is we're gonna roll for these, and mm -hmm. the lowest score you can get is a three, and the highest you can get is an 18 at level one. Boom. Look at all that. I just throw all of them at <laughs> you once. You throw them all, yeah. Oh, no. Where? We're gonna just take four of the uh, of the D6s. These are D6s. So okay. the way the dice work is this is a D4, four-sided, six-sided, eight-sided, 10-sided, 12-sided, and 20-sided. 20-sided you're gonna use the most yeah. in the game once we get playing. Uh, but now just in character creation, we're you're gonna use, you're gonna roll these six times. And we're going to write that down, and then we're going to assign the scores that we get to okay. the ability scores. Not too bad, 12. Okay, nice, 14. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 14, okay, cool. So now, uh, one of the things to remember, too, is because you're a high elf, you're going to get a couple of bonuses. You're going to get to your dexterity, you're going to get plus two. Plus two. So just remember that. And then for your intelligence, you're going to get plus one. Um, now, intelligence is the stat for, for wizards. Wizard, right? So what I, you know, I can't see any reason why you wouldn't uh, put that put that 15, 15 in. on the intelligence. Yeah, and make it a 16 because that'll actually give you more bonuses too. Yeah. So I take the cross out the 15, cross out that, put it in intelligence, and, add the one. and make it a 16. Okay. Yeah, and also you can add. Uh, add do a little plus three below that. What's that's that? gonna be, that, that's the bonuses you get for any intelligence-based skill that might happen later. So that's all very good. Which are gonna be a lot of skills for me. For yeah, myself. definitely, yeah. <laughs> so now the next number to place is we have a 14 that we need to put somewhere. Um, and uh, I would say uh, one of the things that we need to remember about wizards is that they can't wear armor. Um, and so, either constitution or dexterity would both be good places to put that. Uh, What's the difference in dexterity and constitution? They're both protecting you? They're both protecting you, but in different ways. Mm -hmm. So constitution is uh, is how hardy you are, how, how many hits can you take, how far can you go without being exhausted, uh, things of that nature. Dexterity is how agile are you? Can you jump out of the way if someone's trying to attack you? Can you, you know, uh, balance on so that both beam? Both kind of defense. Thing. Yeah, yeah. It might make more sense to take the 14 and turn it into a 16 for dexterity. Or 14 in constitution. And then you could take the 12 and 12. put that in dexterity yeah. and make that a 14 too. That's great. Think? That's a good idea. You like that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. 14, so 14 and then 12 and then, in dexterity. Which will be 14 also which because you're, plus two. Uh, your racial bonuses. Okay. Yeah. All right. Great. And then the bonuses with those 14 will both be plus two in the little uh, thing below it. Uh, this is great. Uh, this is a very well-balanced wizard character. I like, I like these numbers a lot. You're immune to magical sleep, which is also a really good thing. So someone I casts- I that I get, uh, that yeah, if they cast a spell on me and they put, or they put everybody to sleep, I don't go to sleep. Yeah, that's, yeah. so you might be dragging people out. I don't you know. really sleep anyway. High elves um, only sleep while they go into a trance for like four hours yeah. versus most uh, characters are like eight hours. Mm -hmm. I read that. I did great. my homework a awesome. little bit. Yeah. <laughs> I didn't want to be a super noob, so <laughs> I tried to learn That's a little. That's great. Though. We're gonna talk about spells. Uh, Sweet. As a wizard, you get your spells from knowledge. You get your spells from studying and from learning them from other wizards that might give you a spell to learn or a spell book that you find or along looting? the way. Or looting? Or looting, yeah. You could loot a scroll and then see, oh, this is a spell. I'm gonna copy it into my, into my book. Um, You've got two types of spells. You've got cantrips, and then you've got first level spells. Cantrips are the spells that you can cast at will. You can cast those anytime you want. They're the ones that you've been practicing your whole life. So, uh, you know, if you want to cast Firebolt every yeah. round, you can do it right out of your finger. Cool. Um, level one spells, 
as a level one wizard, you can only cast two of those uh, per, per long rest or per day, sometimes people say, but, but really like whenever you go into your trance again, you can only cast these, you can only cast two of these. You have all of these prepared, so you can pick from these, from these and we're gonna add a few more too now that we know what your uh, ability scores are. Mm -hmm. But you can only cast basically two per day or two per long rest. All we have left to do right now is decide your name. What is your character's name? My cat's name is Moon. Okay. So I thought Moon could be my first name. And then uh, Blood. That's great. I just yeah. want to be a little evil. Yeah, why not? I mean, you are, you are good, but good, you know, we're but good characters. But Moon Blood. Yeah, Moon you Blood. Like it? I like it. Okay, cool. I like it. Great, so write that in your, right here. And here is Moonblood. That's gonna ah, be your, 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 uh, your figure today. She's hot. <laughs> and I will see you when the party assembles. Yay, thanks. Great. <laughs> Come on in. Hey. Al, what's going on, man? What's hey, good to see you. Good ya. to see you too. Have a seat. Right on. Yeah. So thanks for joining us on this little adventure today. Absolutely. Yeah. I love what you've done with the place, by the way. Yeah, it's great, yeah, right? Yeah, yeah. Everyone's got a suit of armor in their basement. No, just you and I. Oh. I think pretty much just you and I okay. at this point. Fair enough. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, you're, kind of, you're one of my ringers. You, you're right. one of my veteran players. That's right. Tell me a little bit about that. Well, I, uh, I grew up in a place called Peaks Mill, Kentucky, and at the, at the uh, Tom Sawyer Library, we would have Dungeons and Dragons every Sunday. I became the kind of de facto dungeon master when I was 11 and then 12 years old because I was the only one who wanted to do the reading. Well, what we're gonna do today yes. is we're gonna play uh, a sort of a classic party makeup. And I didn't want to add any more classes, so we're gonna have two fighters. So you're gonna be the second fighter, right. and you're gonna play a half of good, yeah. Yeah, it's always good to have another fighter in yes. a party. What I love to do is, uh, I love to have people roll for their stats. Great. We've, we've, uh, we've filled out a lot of this already, sure. and we'll go over that in a minute, but, I, but I'm gonna give you your dice. These are officially your dice. These are your dice to keep. What? Yeah, all for you for today. Aww. Very exciting. I should have brought my loaded dice. Oh, hey, yes. not too bad. Not okay, too bad, finally. not all too right. shabby. Right. So we've got, Two 14s, a nine, a 12, and two 10s. Now, yeah. because you're a half elf, mm -hmm. you get plus two to charisma, and this is what's great, you get plus one to any other stat of your choosing. Oh. Um, that comes to the fact that uh, elves get higher charisma and humans add plus one to all other stats. Right, in fifth and edition. since I'm half, right. so you get, to yeah, do one. get that little extra yeah. bump. Okay, cool. Well, since I'm a fighter, um, it, you know, I'm gonna load up my uh, my strength and my dexterity with the 14s. Okay, great. Like that, and that's a plus one there too. So okay, I, I so would yeah, go ahead and write that as a 15. Now you can't add plus to both. You have to you have to pick. So you can only so it's it's uh, plus one to one of your choosing. Oh, I and then plus two to charisma. Blanket. That's very no, disappointing. Sorry, man. You got to right. pick one. So uh, so okay. So dexterity will get a 14. Yeah. And then I get plus what on charisma? You get plus two on charisma. So, so whatever. 12. Right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Great. Okay. There we go. Not so, bad. I'm not. I'm. I'm not stupid, but I might make some dumb decisions now and again. Right. But you're pretty strong. Yes, I am. Yeah. All we need now is your your character's name. Yes. Um, well, Haldor is always my uh, kind of D and D uh, go to you know, go to name. Yeah. But we had Love a it. like. Uh, what it would come up for a last name, Spalharkis or something? Or like? sp uh, uh, sp uh, Spal Spalharks, right? Sp Spalharks. Spalharks. Yeah. yeah. Haldor Spalharks. Yeah. Yeah. Love that it. works. I like it. Uh, and here's Haldor. Ah, oh, that's yeah. awesome. That's going to be your uh, your looks your mini just for like today. me. It does. It really does. Only it taller. Up. And uh, I will see you when the party assembles. I love it. Cool. Do you guys want to introduce each other uh, to each other really quick? Just kind of tell me uh, your your character's name, what your what your job is, your class is, and, and uh, you know, kind of where you're. I am Haldor Spalox. I am half elf because mother was that way, and uh, 
not an elf, I mean, <laughs> if you know what I'm saying. And uh, I destroy evil, which is what I do. So hi guys, my name is Trin Hilltopple. I'm a half halfling and half rogue. Or oh, that's my class. <laughs> yeah, right. Now, actually, you're all halfling, all rogue. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah your half race is halfling, halfling your half job is rogue. You're half right. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I'm halfling rogue, that's what I am. That's so, right. So I, I, you know, I'm here to help us get to our goal, and that's what we're going to do. Guys, you ready? Mm-hmm. Right. Right. Hi, I'm Moonblood. I am a high elf wizard, and I will have your backs no matter what, through thick and thin, through the whole entire night, and I will be there to cast spells on all of our enemies, and I will be there for you all. Uh, I am uh, Thumpar, Fireforge. <laughs> that is why they call me Thumpar. Uh, I am a mountain dwarf. I uh, like to fight. I will, uh, I'm in very strong. And I have a lot of constitution. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I uh, grew up making beer. And I want to, I love talking we about beer. We can be friends. friends. Yeah, we're there. Thoughts right. about beer. That's Let's right. talk about beer. All right. right. Yeah. I guess that's where the constitution comes from. More of a wine girl. Yeah. yeah. Uh, my name is Deborah. I am a cleric of Helm, and I am here to just make snacks and heal people. So <laughs> please, snacks. if you need anything, I'm here. Great, and heal people with your snacks. I'm gonna kill people too, but mm -hmm. I like to talk about the healing more. Yeah. Deborah, Thumpar, Moon, Haldor, and Trin. All five of you grew up in the city of Waterdeep, and all five of you met on the steps of the Adventurer's Guild, a guild that all of you are trying to join, but you've all been turned away because you've been on no adventures. Trin, in your uh, underground network, being a rogue, uh, you have heard of the legend of Rogan and Zeligar. Rogan the Fearless and Zeligar the Unknown are legendary names. Rogan earned his name as a great warrior and his reputation spread far and wide across the land. Zeligar, equally renowned, earned his status and power as a foremost practitioner of the mystical arts of magic and sorcery. No one knows what brought these two together, but they formed a strong bond of friendship. Eventually, stories surfaced about a hideaway being built deep in the wilderness, far from the nearest settlement, away from traveled routes, where they practiced their adventuring prowess and kept their treasures. Thirty years ago, a great barbarian invasion came from the lands of the north, threatening to engulf the entire land. Rogan and Zeligar and their band of loyal henchmen met the barbarian army in great battle. Rogan slew a horde of barbarians single-handedly, and Zeligar's powerful magic put their army to flight. Eager to destroy the hordes once and for all, Rogan and Zeligar pursued the barbarian horde into the north where they met their demise in a great battle that shook the heavens. In the past week, it has come to your attention that there is a man named Darian in the town of Daggerford who claims to have a map to a mystical lost keep, a place apparently called, just by one letter, Q. He claims it's the lost keep of Rogan and Zeligar. It's filled with vast knowledge and treasure, and he's entertaining bidders. The map is accurate. It could lead you to the mystical place that was once their home and sanctuary, and perhaps their treasure trove. Just the thing that you guys might need to prove that you're adventurers and gain admittance into the Waterdeep Adventurers Guild. Now, Daggerford is just the next town uh, south. It's just right down the Sword Coast. Um, you could get there easily, so, um, Let's say you go. Mm -hmm. That's pretty obvious. <laughs> right. Get him, move on. Um, I'm for it. I just got to pack a lunch and then, uh, yeah, I just my character needs to do a couple I can, of things. I can bring lunch. I'm That's happy great. to. That's like, great. if anyone needs anything, okay. great. I'm here. vegan. <laughs> <Yeah>. so now, <laughs> you have reached the town of Daggerford. Oh. Mm -hmm. uh, and there is, you heard that uh, Darion is hanging out in the in called the Broken Boatwright. Um, Daggerford is a town of 900 people. It wishes it was a, uh, a bustling metropolis, and it, they, they, they try, but uh, it's, it's, you know, 
there's not that many there's not that many in so finding the broken boat ride is 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 pretty easy <laughs> how can you trust people from a place called named after daggers and isn't the coast sword coast yeah i mean what yeah right come on okay yeah, yeah. You're you're little, begging people don't not to come back, back on anyone <laughs> literally place. do not come right. to That's our a good region. idea yeah. We get wisdom extra points for that. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, so what's our, our first yeah, option? What do we want to do? What do you, what do you guys want to do? Oh. Well, we need to, Drink. Go, we need to go in there. Yes, we need to go in there. Get that map. Okay. I think so. Uh, now, who's good at talking to people? Like, who's friendly, charismatic? That would be me. Oh, fantastic. I think, or, I'm very charismatic. Or you. You have spells. My charisma's not really on its Mine's game. Mine's pretty good. Okay. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> if I do say so, but damn so. All right. Right. Oh, yeah. Okay. But so, I have wisdom enough to let you start. There you I go. See, there you go. All right. <laughs> All right. So uh, you enter the inn. It's it's actually pretty bustling. There's probably about 20 people in there. Okay. Um, you see the bartender sort of tending bar and uh, you know uh, wiping it down. And he looks at you and, and uh, clearly doesn't recognize you. So he's like, "Welcome to Daggerford. Never seen you guys here before." Hmm. He sort of goes back to you know cleaning cleaning glasses. Let's kill him. <laughs> Sir, we look for an old friend of ours. Old friend, you say? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Old, what's his name? I didn't write D down. Darian. Darian. Yeah, Darian. <laughs> Darian. Darian. We hmm. seek Darian. You sure you're not thirsty from your long journey? You all look thirsty to me. It's this very important. Hey, yeah. Probably Let's, have very important. Let's have a couple beers. <laughs> yes. He's an expert on beer, my friend. What he do you would get? love to taste your wares. Right. Would you like to taste our local brew? Yes. <laughs> okay, uh, that'll be two copper pieces each. All right, here you go. <laughs> okay, great. So uh, he uh, okay. Yes. He he gives you all uh, he gives you all a, 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 all all five of you uh, beers and and uh, you taste it and it's you know it's not it's okay you know it's yeah. not really it doesn't live up to the Fireforge standard. I want one of my coppers yeah. back. <laughs> you're cheating me out of a two cup oh, of beer. Nice, nice. No, you're fine. He, 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 he doesn't. It's not bad. Uh, Darion's, <laughs> Darion's over Here there. Here it is. Darian. Thank you for the business. He, so he points to a man in a green cloak mm -hmm. uh, sitting next to a fire uh, by the hearth. He's reading a book and he's just sort of all by himself. Just, just. Let's go talk to him. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Yep. And then kill him. Right. See, I, I can't remember. Who Darian is specifically? Oh, Darian's the <laughs> guy that's supposedly yeah. selling the map. Selling yeah, the map, the map right. that okay. will yeah. find the territory of the two dead guys who, um, uh, Rogan and Zelliger. Zelliger, the unknown, who was famous. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, true. right. He was <laughs> right. a famous fighter named Zelliger, the unknown. Yeah. He's um, like Zellig. He just blends in. <laughs> right, he blends in everywhere. Good. That could be Zelliger. Um, so, uh, yeah, he allegedly has the map, but right. I, I doubt we go straight for map. So I think it's just kind of like, um, you know, okay. chat him up. Yeah, somebody's right, got to chat let's him, him up. up. Okay, you start with like. Okay, I've got the, I've got fairly decent charisma, I suppose. Okay, yeah. uh, um, I ask him his name, and then I, uh, I guess, I'll, uh, um, excuse me, friend. Yes. When I recognize you from up the coast, are you, are you not? Are you not a member of the Adventurers League? Do you not? No, I'm Victorian. not a member of the Adventurers Guild. I. Or I League. Could, I heard the, yeah, the League, the, the Guild, the Guild itself. The League's a loosely banded group of people, they're friends of mine or whatever. But a friend of mine, Rogan, a friend of my father's, um, hmm. said that he had friends down this way. And we are traveling adventures. Rogan, hmm. That's very interesting. I happen to uh, have procured recently a map to Rogan's yes. abode. Is that so? Yes. Father had said we should always. We had no visit. idea. We should, we, <laughs> Father had always said I should visit this place. It was a gr place of great learning. Hmm. I somehow don't believe you, but I, <laughs> regardless, I have a map. If you have gold, I have things to sell. I'm I say we grab the map and go. Our, we have bigger fish we can to take fry. The whole town. Yeah. Yeah. Well, should we check that he's even Darien? Did, he said he was Darien, but we didn't say. Yeah, maybe we should see the map first. Because if it, if the address on the map is like one of our houses, we'll know it's fake. <laughs> yeah. Okay, and then we turn away from Do our huddle we where we've been loudly saying all of this. Yeah, of course. So he, he, he uh, out of a very ornate uh, scroll case, mm -hmm. he pulls this map out and uh, sort of lit, he sort of opens just about you know a few inches of mm -hmm. it to show you and and you notice the the surrounding countryside every sort everything sort of looks right. It, right so how do we you know, know this is the real map 
You we don't. We don't. <laughs> How much is it? How much? 30 gold pieces. Ooh. There are a lot of people that want their hands on this one. <laughs> yeah. I'm pretty firm on the price. Mm -hmm. 60. <laughs> or 60, higher. sure, yeah, absolutely. <laughs> yes. Okay, so. I kill him. Anybody How got any fake gold? Yeah, do we have money? <laughs> do, do we have money on your you? sheet? Do we have money oh. on your sheet? Tons of money? What is that? I have four gold. You do? Yeah, you there, it's right here. Oh. Where's, where's my gold? It's right there in where's the Oh, I got 12. Middle there. Yeah. I'm loaded. I got 12. You got yeah, I've got gold? 12. You got gold? Is I'm it not GP? paying for oh, the yeah. whole map. I've got 12. Look at the map. Gold pieces. You love maps. We can all go in evenly on the map. All right. So okay. uh, I will give my 12 if anyone wants to match and meet with me to um, to buy the map. I've only got 12. Then okay, we, so we all right. I've got 24 right now. Who needs, I, have, who? I have four gold. Okay, you have four. I'm you sorry. Have three. Where does it say that? Um, actually, yeah, you have you have three gold pieces. Okay. I'll do eight, and then that'll, ma that'll be 30, right? Uh, four. Six. On oh, you seven. only have four? Yeah. I only oh. have three. In the world, but it's fine. Okay, okay. I'll match. Okay, how about this? <laughs> yeah, we'll, yeah. We'll, do the, we'll give all of ours, and you can uh, give us six more. We just need six from you, 30 gold to him. Yep. So. Or we just do, we write do it for down? 20 gold. Yeah, I just did write down you have zero gold. <laughs> Price is gold. Gold. I'm not here <laughs> yes, to negotiate. Just pay for it. Let's okay. go. All right. Do you have change for a 30 of two? <laughs> I don't give change. All right. Well, so back to normal. Okay, right. so you give him the 30 gold pieces. And we get he, the map. He, he hands you the map. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And then immediately stands up and walks out a side door. Keep yeah. an eye on him. Yeah. Yes. Let's keep an eye on him. Mm -hmm. Want me to follow him? Follow him. Don't kill him yet. You want to go spy on him? All right, follow him. Sure. All right, I Don't follow you. Far. You follow him through the door. Can I follow you through the door? He's gone. Dude, uh, that dude oh. just disappeared. Mm -hmm. Completely disappeared. He's left mm. it as a burden. All right, what's so the, now we have to look at the map. Yeah, let's look the map, map. Yeah, let's let's look the map over. Yeah. Okay, so you you roll out the map. That guy got it, it looks <laughs> right. It looks legit, mm -hmm. and you see basically, a, you know, uh, what looks like the surrounding countryside. About two days journey, uh, you see the letter. You see the letter Q. Yep. So everything seems to match up with what you heard in your in your spy that's road. That's where we'll okay. find certain yeah, devices we're... that will help us fight <laughs> not that cute. Different, different Oh, different cues. Yes. Yes. Sorry. Yeah. So we should follow the map and look the cues along yes, the way. Look at, look. Yes, Ooh. absolutely. It looks like a shawl. Map to cue. Yeah, okay. So I, I think we start on the... Is there a... Uh, can we tell from the map if there is a more circuitous or more dangerous route? Um... It, it, it looks direct. pretty dangerous. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it doesn't Any way look, you look at it. If, from what you know, you grew up in Waterdeep, which is we'll the, the, the big city yeah. north of here, from, from what you may know just with your, okay. your survival skills. Yeah. Um, these don't look like roads or paths you've ever seen before. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Then I Let's think we go. start on the firmest, straightest path to Q, since that's our goal. We want to be in the Adventurers Guild, man. Let's we can't go. tiptoe around. After that nonsense trying to decide whether or not to buy the map, I'm questioning whether <laughs> we deserve to be we, in the Adventures Guild, okay. us. We're right, just we, getting going. We throw we'll a little better. caution to the wind, people. Yeah. <laughs> All right, you start out on the map. You've already, you, you, you're already well equipped for this. You, you, you're, you're ready for this. Mm -hmm. you're, you're ready to go. So what, what, I, what we're going to do is I'm, you're, I'm going to get you right there. Yeah. You know, okay. th that, this, is, this is what our adventure Straight to is Q. all about. If, and what I want to say also, too, is if, the, if this were a longer campaign, mm -hmm. if this were a campaign that we were starting as friends and we were going to play every week, you know, every, every Wednesday in the library, um, there, there may have been a lot more um, detailed things along the route, but I want to get you to Q because th th that's what we're going to be focusing the meat on of it today. today. Right. Yeah. Great. So. I'm excited. Yeah, that's where, that's where the fun go. happens. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Let's go to Q. Do I have a so, teleportation spell? <laughs> no, I have it. At level one, you do not have a teleportation spell. No. <laughs> level one, you don't have... Jack. Jack. <laughs> yeah, yeah, right. So, uh, here's what happens. So, you're following along the map, and uh, you're in a heavily wooded area. Light. You don't need light yet. Hey. It's, oh. it's, it's during the day. You're okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's like light. <laughs> I want to do You can cast it as many times as you want. So you guys need light. You can cast it on each tree as you, as you went along if you yeah. want. Yeah. You see as you're getting closer to on the map, which what looks, everything is kind of, you know, it's like third rock on the left kind of thing. Everything looks, looks legit to you. Um, and you're going up a sort of craggy hill uh, at the top of this path that doesn't look very worn at all. You see a cave-like opening 
somewhat obscured by vegetation, noticeable at the end of a treacherous pathway which leads up to the craggy outcropping of black rock. By sweeping aside some of the vines and branches, the opening becomes easily accessible. A dungeon? So you look like you're at the, the, the entrance opening of a cave. Of uh, the opening of a cave. Oh, okay. Yeah. So okay. I say we enter the cave. I say we yeah. enter the cave. Great. Good. Okay. And that's where we're going to take a little bit of a break. And the next episode, we're going to enter that cave. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. What?